Well, I believe. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I believe we have our uh, guest on the line. Um, I think he's connected, but uh, just real quick, I'm gonna do his intro. I want to read his intro for the uh, for the listeners. So, uh, growing up on South Whidbey Island, Washington, Mark K. Sargent started his career playing computer games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. From there, he spent the next 20 years training people in proprietary software. In 2014, he looked into what is no doubt the most ridiculous conspiracy ever called Flat Earth Theory, and through extensive research, discovered that it wasn't so laughable after all. In 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos titled Flat Earth Clues, which delves into the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a Truman Show-like enclosed system and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. Welcome to Authentic Enlightenment, Mark Sargent. Are you with us? I am with you. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. Love to have yeah. you. Love to have you. Cool. So um, I don't know if you want to if you want to oh, just jump ahead. right into it and uh, you know give, give us maybe your intro and what sure, you're working you on understand. now if, if you have new yeah, videos or whatever you want to do. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's uh, you know for those people that are listening for the first time and and you know try to dig the wax out of their ears because they just heard the term flat Earth and thought that you guys just went nuts for for having me on the show. <laughs> uh, I'll, tr- I'll, I'll, I'll try to break it down for you because, again, everybody will brace against this. And, and I'll yeah. open it a little dif- differently than I do other things, which is, you know, I can say w- the, the reason why my website is called enclosedworld.com instead of something like flatearth.com is that I can bring up the Truman Show concept, you know, that movie from 1998. I can bring that up all day long and no one will even bat an eye at it. But the second I say flat earth, people just brace against it like it's a like it's a wave coming at them and that they absolutely want no part of it and that's a really really strange thing because they shut down yeah yeah they they shut down uh they you know and again what i try to tell people is like look don't feel bad you know if you roll your eyes when you're hearing that if you laugh if you just you know do one of those you got to be kidding me type moments don't worry because that is that should be your response if you don't react that way to this, then I think there's probably something wrong with you, uh, because everybody does, including me. Uh, I started I started out uh, as a debunker on on this thing uh, last summer, back in back in 2014. Uh, I was a you know big conspiracy guy. I looked into just about everything you could think of uh, over the years, and. I got to the point where I was looking at, I was looking for something new, you know, something it's like, okay, what haven't, what, what card in the deck haven't I looked at? And every time I got past, you know, the, the flat earth thing, I was going, this is silly. And I understood because I, you know, I just tossed it aside for years and years. And there was this uh, German guy who was, who was dealing with some flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere. And it was kind of a new take on it. And, and he goes, look, there's something wrong with the plane routes in the Southern Hemisphere. I go, okay, whatever. And then I watched Matt Boylan's video, you know, the, the guy that claims that he worked for NASA, you know, back in his 20s, and that they had told him that, that the Earth really wasn't a globe, but it wasn't what you think like. We were kind of in this giant terrarium slash planetarium. I go, okay, I should be able to knock this thing out in a weekend. I should be able to just snuff this thing out and be done with it and, and be done. So I looked at it, and it turned into really like a, like a Pandora's box in a, in a plain brown wrapper. And every time I thought I had something, it just opened up more doors that led to unanswered questions to the point where, you know, like February this year, I just gave up. Uh, I was I was trying to prove the globe, at, you know, after a while. It wasn't like I was trying to get rid of the flat Earth model. I was really trying to prove it was a globe. And so that's what I wanted so, to so do. If I can just, I'm sorry, you're going really, really good. I, I, I hate to interrupt oh, you. Oh, no, but, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, you just, again, you, my interest is always kind of getting peaked. But I just want to start real quick. Um, yeah. This is Andrew. Chris is, is working on his uh, system um I'm the co-host, but uh, real quick, uh, uh-huh. you know, every, I, I've just, honestly, I'll be honest, I have ignored this for far too long, and it's just really been 
uh, you know, Chris, he already went through, and, and Mark and, and Mike, they've gone through and looked at it, and I just haven't. <laughs> I've just kind of shoved it aside, and, but I'll tell you, um, and, I, and I shouldn't have. I was making fun of it when I really didn't look at it, which isn't fair, but I'll tell you, though, uh, I am I am interested in it, and it's funny. I like the intro because it really is laughable, but then it's not. And and what you just said interests me because you, you're now trying to actually prove a globe which that's yeah. interesting to me, you know, and it seems that people, when they think flat earth, I think this is right off the bat. I, what I think is you have to, I mean, you don't have to do anything, but I think of it as maybe explaining to people that they have this concept of just completely flat. And to them, they shut right down, I think, because they can look and see that, okay, the moon's round, the sun's round. And so the earth must be round. We, we are not saying it's not, you're not saying it's not round, but, flat in the sense that it's not just like a flat piece of paper, more of yeah. a, a dome kind of. Is that correct? Exactly. I'm literally talking about the Truman Show, only thousands right. of miles wide. Yeah. And, okay. uh, yeah, and it was, again, it, it, you, it's okay if you laugh at it. I laughed at it. I, I was, and I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. I've just said this on other things. I was physically embarrassed to click on the link to even go down this road. Right. I mean, that's, we're, that's, we're, that's exactly where I was, and, and that's yeah. why I was laughing at it when I shouldn't have been. Yeah, well, it's, again, it's okay. Everybody laughs. You know, kind of like the – remember that, that thing in The Matrix where Neo falls off the building when he first jumps, and they yeah. say everybody, everybody falls the first time? Everybody, <laughs> everybody laughs the first time, and you laugh, and you laugh, and then all of a sudden you stop laughing, <laughs> and then you go, oh, crap. You know, then, then you have to deal with it. But so I put the question out in February. You know, I basically built out the clues and we'll go into them, you know, as you want to see fit. I built out the clues and I basically asked the Internet and I call it the Internet hive mind because, you know, they act as really as a cohesive unit and they miss nothing. And I say, look, prove to me it's a globe at this point because I couldn't do it. And I was really hoping that somebody, you know, some, somebody in the middle of Nebraska at three in the morning, you know, just opened up a book and said, oh, yeah, here's how you do it. Here, here's how it's a globe and, and you can stop now. And here we are at the end of July and a lot of people have gone after this thing. Some smart people have gone after this, tried to debunk it, and they've all been pulled into the quicksand like, like everyone else. And it is just amazing that we have gotten to this point to where it is, you know, I I've, I've almost started to lose count of the amount of interviews I've done. And the fact that, you know, there's, it, it's, it's not just a groundswell anymore. There, people are talking. Heck, there was a, um, uh, I'll, I'll mention this because you guys probably didn't even catch it. You remember when uh, a couple of days ago or a little while ago when uh, Kent Hovind got out of jail? You guys knew, knew about that? No, no. no. Okay, well, Kent, Kent Hovind, the guy that was the big uh, anti-evolution guy, he gets out of jail, right? And he gets on camera and some, and the people are somebody's talking to him. They're interviewing. Him. You know what the first questions they're asking him? And he'd been in jail for several years for tax evasion. They they're asking him. It's like, what do you think about this flat Earth concept? And he's like, going, what? What are you talking about? It's a globe, obviously. But what was interesting about that was the reason why I mention it is that uh, the day before yesterday, Forbes magazine picked up on that, and they actually. So when you type in flat Earth into Google. You just don't see the Wikipedia thing in the Flat Earth Society anymore. The first thing you see is Forbes magazine running the story with Flat Earth in the title. Sure. News. And it's, it's like, holy crap. I, I'm, is, still, this I'm, going? I'm, I'm still flabbergasted right now. I'm sorry, but it's been a few minutes <laughs> since you said it. But I haven't heard anyone. I think I'm way behind everybody else. And I'm usually way ahead of everybody else. Not to sound cocky, but I, have, <laughs> I haven't looked at this. And, and I'm still flabbergasted that you said that I'm trying to prove it's a globe. That's, that's, that is, uh, I don't know why, but that just hit me a certain way. And that's kind of cool. I, I, was, I was going to ask before we get any farther here and like really get into this, I, I've just got to ask the question of why, what, why, you know, why make up this big elaborate story that the earth is around then? Oh, why? Oh, geez. Yeah, like, it's, 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 because I'm like the, you. I, I go into everything like, you know, debunking, you know, conspiracy theories, and that's how I kind of, you know, got started, you know, doing this as well. So, you know, yeah, there's going to be a, a why, right? Because I mean, the, the, the big reason was uh, because they could not – okay, I'll, I'll give you the quick the, – the, the 60 second backstory – was that 
if our civilization goes back 5,000 years, the first 4,500 of them, we thought the earth was flat. You know, the famous men in black speech mm -hmm. where it's like 500 years ago, we knew the earth was flat. Every culture, every tribe, every government, they all bought it, right? And then Copernicus, Copernicus and a couple other guys, they come out in, uh, you know, about in the early 1500s and they say, hey, it's, it's a globe. Well, the problem was they couldn't prove it. There, there was no technological way to prove it because eventually you had to get high enough to take the picture. But it was 1500. You know, hot air balloons didn't really come along until 1700. Uh, the first planes didn't come out until like 1900. And then really the first rockets to get up to any sort of decent height wasn't until 1957. So here's the problem. Let's say you've been pushing the globe for 20 plus generations, 20, 25 generations. And you finally get up there high enough to see what the world really looks like, and you're wrong. Do you tell the public? And, you know, the authority well, like... Well, he, and and let ahead. me just stop you real quick, because here's where it gets interesting. I'm not trying to censor you or anything. I just wanted to point this out. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Real quick is the interesting thing about that, okay, Uh so you have to look at the time frame, okay, because of how, you know, saying that the Earth was round and that uh, the Earth wasn't the center of the universe and all these things are all revolutionary, right? So it's not just like back, back then when they, when they sort of changed it, you know, um, to say, well, no, no, now it's round. You know, like you said, they couldn't really prove it or prove it was a globe, you know? So it's not yeah. like, oh, we're, we're just wrong. We're not going to switch it. We're embarrassed. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's more like, is there... <laughs> Is there some kind of agenda or, yes. or or what have you? I mean, because think about it, right? Like, we have looked at history and said, well, we've been lied to so much, and, and so much of history is just covered up And as far as ancient civilizations go and all that. So now, okay, the Earth is actually almost like a Petri. We're almost like a Petri dish, like a culture. Like, we're being studied in this little culture. So, like, we're fenced in by these glacial, uh, you know... <laughs> kind of barriers or whatever and and again it goes it goes further into okay what about space and all that and it's like it's not just oh they were wrong it's what if they actually switched and switched the flat earth theory to cover up i mean that's my question is did you, they you, switch you're you're, you're, to, and you're absolutely you're absolutely right you're, you're absolutely right there was another agenda behind it which was a you know, the, the elaborate more elaborate version is this that the secret societies knew full well uh, you know, hundreds of years ago that the earth was flat. But, and I, and I firmly believe whoever built this place also kind of coaxed it along, kind of like helped it out, because here's right. the problem. Right, okay, human, that's what I was getting at. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, human beings do not like being fenced in. We do not like confinement, which is why jail is the worst thing we can come up with as far as punishment, except for, you know, killing people. So the only way that you can keep people from, because remember, up until 4,500 years ago, we thought there was an outer edge. But since we didn't have the technology to get out there, it didn't make any difference. If you're, again, you're the king of France in 1500 and you're showing a map and it's flat, what good is it going to do you? Not until the internal combustion came out, you know, in about 1900, did, did things really, really change. So here's what happens. So you, you, let, you, you tell the people, it's a globe, and here's why. Because it makes the fence, it doesn't make it just invisible, it makes it never there in the first place. So, you know, because you can't tell people there's a fence and then say, uh, you know, oh, by the way, it's not really a fence anymore, it's just, it's just nothing. You create a globe, and therefore what happens is nobody goes looking for the edge because there is no edge. You know, you're just going around in a circle on a, on a ball, they're not, nobody's going to find anything, so nobody looks. Now, of course, you're going, to send, you're going to make sure you protect the edge when you finally get the technology available to you, which is exactly what, what, what happened now. Uh, you know, anyone wants to look it up, look up uh, online. And again, none of this is secret stuff. It's just very, very low-key. Look up the Antarctic Defense Force, a multinational uh, armada, top-of-the-line military equipment, which protect the coastline of Antarctica. You know, even though there's nobody living on it, why why would you have an Antarctic Defense Force? It's it's ridiculous. So what is past that then? What, what is past Antarctica? It, yes, yeah. It, from from every indicator I can tell, there is some sort of barrier. There is an edge to this thing. If you want to call it the edge of the dome, the firmament, the wall, whatever it is, they found it during Operation Deep Freeze in 1955 and 1956. I think Admiral Byrd, Richard Byrd himself, uh, the youngest 
admiral in the United States Navy and probably our greatest explorer. Uh, he, he found it in 1956. They let the Russians in on it, and then the Russians and the Americans pretty much had to cover everything up as best they could from 1956 through today, which okay. includes... Go ahead. So, uh, keep, keep going, because you're going to get to what I'm going to ask. Keep going. Oh, okay. At, at that point, you know, they had to, between two big things, one, if you're going to seal off, you're going to hide something like this. And really the question becomes, how do you hide the world? And it's easier than you might think because of the natural barriers that are already in place. I mean, Antarctica is already a brutal, brutal continent as it is. It's the most unique continent out there. But you seal off Antarctica, and then you seal off the upper edge through uh, militarizing space between those two things. Then it comes a question of, if it is a Truman Show, can you keep the population from finding out? How long can you keep them finding out, even in advanced technology? And, and I believe that the limit is about now, is about 60 years. You see, you, you just did <laughs> exactly, because uh, that was the thing is, I was going to say there's two things here as well, going into space and then looking down from space. And also, yeah. now you just said it, militarizing space, that is, that's a big thing. And, and there's a, diff, a few different reasons why they may have done that, you know, because when they, you know, some people say, well, when they put the weapons in space, they actually directed them outward. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. they also directed them inward. Now, they say they did it, of course, you know, the U.S. government, whether they admit it or not, you know, they're going to say, well, it's for Russia and Iran or North Korea and to protect against threats like that, you know, from as far as from space. But what if, like you said, they're doing it to any any privatization attempt to go up and and photograph this thing? And like some would say that's already been done. But again, what we've seen from the highest limits from private photos really doesn't prove or disprove anything, um, you know, as far as that. But so does this have anything to do with this, with the Cold War, the space race? Can can because I I haven't found any kind of connection to, you oh, know, yeah, the flat, yeah. flat Earth. Yeah, but you, please can, can get into that. You bet. Uh, the Russians. Uh, and I won't go into the, the story of how the Russians saved our butt during the Civil War. That's a whole other thing for another time, unless you guys want to get into it later. But the Russians, the Soviet Union, because, you know, they're Russia and, and faction in, in different countries now, but the Soviet Union has been the United States ally since the beginning. They, they have been our secret brothers through this entire uh, aspect. And it has been... I agree with you on that. Very clever to watch, because the Cold War was really just ramping up things so you could get funding for the space race. Think of it this way. After Operation Deep Red, I'll give you a whole bunch of coincidences if you believe in coincidences, and I do not. The saying, I still hold true, and I know it's kind of a cliche, and that is, I've heard of coincidences, I've just never seen one. And, that, you know, coincidence is when you run into your neighbor at the grocery store. Everything else, that's probably planned. And yeah, I say I... I just said the exact same thing the other day in uh, one of my articles that I do not believe in coincidences, but go ahead. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Then you'll, you'll dig this. So in 1955-1956, Byrd goes down there after 1954, and again, you can look up the, the YouTube footage when he goes on national television and says Antarctica is made out of money. You know, it's, it's got uh, you know, mountain ranges made out of coal, it's got oil, it's got uranium, uh, it's got minerals, and 55-56, that's when everything changes. As soon as that operation was done, every country that was down there left at the same time. And we'll circle back to Russia. At that point, Russia and America immediately, the, the Cold War just ramps up for, for no apparent reason, even though unilater I'm sorry, unilaterally, they both left the ice at the same time. They both start their rope, ro rocket programs in 1957. The beginning of 1958, they both start putting atomic weapons on the top of their rockets and start firing them straight up. After the first two shots that the Amer uh, United States did, they immediately formed NASA. Boom, right then and there. Uh, and at that point, space was militarized on both sides uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the map. You know, you had Russia on one side that was militarizing and America on the other side. And... <clears throat> That while NASA was being formed, both Russia and America were firing nukes for four straight years. You know, big hits, and like they were trying to map out the sky with something. You know, what were, what were they shooting at? What were they trying to break through? You know, at, at, I think some of their highest shots were about 400 kilometers, give or take. And then 
you know, coincidence, they, uh, they both stopped firing. Uh, they both decided to cancel their, their high altitude tests on the exact same day in 1962. You know, it's like uh, it's, people say, oh, it was a moratorium. It was mutually agreed. It wasn't mutually agreed anything. They both gave up at the exact same time, and they knew exactly when it was going to happen. 1959. As they're doing these high altitude tests, they just, you know, NASA all of a sudden announces the Van Allen radiation belts. You know, this, mass, this, this <laughs> massive band of radiation that supposedly no human can go through. And, and, you know, this is announced by Van Allen, a NASA employee. The very same year that they announced the Van Allen radiation belts, the Antarctic Treaty is signed really quietly, really low key. And if people that don't understand what the Antarctic Treaty is, it means it is signed by every nation that becomes an economic power. No corporation, no matter how much money they have, no matter how powerful they are, no corporation from any country in the world can do business, can do any resource exploration, cannot be in Antarctica. And it's okay, forever. let me stop you. Let me stop you because this is where, this is to me, like what you, the Antarctic Treaty, this is where people should tune in. Be, because that is one of the most important parts that I've seen so far. Yeah. That it's a real tell. It's telling you something. Something that you're being told now <laughs> to listen. Because when corporations are are kept in the dark, something yeah. is going on. And I'm just yeah. going to leave it at that. Let you go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What what conspiracy is bigger than money? Up until now, there's never been a conspiracy bigger than money. Uh, and I'll use the petroleum industry because I like picking on them. And that is, look, the oil companies can f go into your backyard and start fracking today if they wanted to. It's just a question of money and who they have to bribe to get there. But they aren't even, even though they can do that, you know, they're fracking all over the place. You know, they're trying to get into national parks and they're winning. These same companies, not only can they not get into Antarctica, they can't even talk about going into Antarctica. They can't run press releases. They can't spin any stories. They can't lobby politicians. They cannot bring up the subject. When does that happen? It goes against everything that we are as a, as a civilization. We are based on greed and power and money. And those three things do not factor into that place. That's how uh, scary that place is, you know, that's, that's how big a secret it is. It's like, look, we're not even going to let the corporations get a foothold in here because we don't want to deal with the potential fallout, no matter how much money there is to be made here and how many resources and, you know, resources, they're tough to come by. It is, it is amazing. When I saw that, I was like, okay, that's, you know, there's, there's, I was the only time I think I, I got out of character when I was making the videos because it's, it's total crap. There's, there's no story spinning on it. They just don't talk about it. And now, of course, See, that's the thing. Well. I, and I can, and I can bet, sorry to interrupt again, but no, no, go ahead. I, I can almost guarantee 99.9% .9 of truthers or people that are supposedly awake have never heard of the Antarctic Treaty because I know I haven't. <laughs> Not yeah. you know not until I not until just a few uh, probably a week ago, and yeah. and and I I forgot about it until you just brought it up and that's why I I, mean, I just said that. Yeah. So yeah, it, there's a uh, there's a few things that that like I said that I've looked at so far that are like red flags for me and 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 kept me uh, interested. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. one of them, and and I just I want to keep listening, so just go ahead because you got oh, no, you got me. It, it, it's totally cool. <laughs> so. The, so the Antarctic Treaty is locked down in 1959. The Van Allen radiation belts are locked down in 1959. And, you know, people disregard the Van Allen radiation belts. And I know people want to hold on to the Apollo program and the moon missions, but you've got to understand that the Van Allen radiation belts, for NASA, that is the, the, the gorilla in the room that they don't want to address, which is, look, these things are supposedly the deadliest things uh, ever, but unfortunately, radiation, there's only, only two types of metals that are really used for radiation shielding. One is lead, and two is gold, and neither of those were used on the capsules. We, and, and supposedly, we took you know, Apollo 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. These, these men supposedly took round trips through those Van Allen radiation belts. Round trips, mind you, that's twice came back without any radiation poisoning, no cancer down the road, the capsules weren't contaminated, nothing. And when you say, well, what did they, uh, what did they use for shielding? NASA, you just hear crickets. NASA will not answer that question. 
Uh, mm -hmm. and, and even the the Orion program, which they're still trying to, you know, if people want to have fun, look up the Orion uh, NASA promotional videos that are on YouTube, where they're saying, oh, yeah, we've still got to figure oh, out how to deal with the, the they, Van Allen belt. Isn't that the one where they they basically said that, didn't they just basically admit in the video that no one's ever gone, This will be. they said this will be the first time that yeah. we've ever gone out past the Van Allen belt? Yeah. In the it's video? Like, what do you what are you talking about? Supposedly you said a whole bunch of men seven times in the sixties. So what, what do you, yeah, it's, it, I can't, it's almost like they want to get caught. And that's why, you know, some people are, have, have already started saying, okay, you know, maybe the fact that this topic is, is being discussed this year is because it's a setup for something else. And well, I, here's I, another I, thing. Here's another thing. Um, for, I'm, you probably know this and, I'm sure the listeners do too. Whenever they like, if you want to call again, I, I don't like using the word Illuminati or because that's sure. not what it is. But but the people that control things, we don't know really who they are because you've never heard. It's not David Rockefeller. It's not. I you know I lump but, I lump them all into one group. I, I lump them all into one group and call them the authority. Yeah. Okay. So the hidden hand, you know, whatever the people you've yeah. never heard of, right? Yeah, uh, you know. Right. Yeah. So these people, right? They always tell you the truth. Right, they always yeah. tell you the truth. You just don't know. You don't realize it. So they always do. They give you a clue, or they give you a piece, but it's always been looked over, you know. And you've already given out two of those uh, since we've been interviewing you of what they've given you, right? And this yeah. thing, it's just like in that video. That's another one that we've never been passive in. I don't know. People just look at that and say, "Well, you know, he meant this, this, and that," or he could. He was. It was a mistake. No, they're telling. They tell you. But people yeah, are so yeah. ignorant and closed-minded, they don't hear it. They're not really listening. Yeah, you wonder if that's part of their rules, if that's part of their protocol, that they have to tell you it's something. It, it is. It's in, it's in everything. Everything yeah. that's done, any false flag, any, any event, they always right. give it to you, whether yeah. beforehand or after or during it. They give it to you. Yeah. But, but okay. yeah. We've talked so. about that. Mark, where does, um, where does the U.N. flag have um, um, you know have to play fit into in this. it. Yeah, fit into when it. Where I did play? with the UN flag, that's an interesting point. Um, the UN flag was when I was doing uh, Clue Three, which was called the Map Makers. What I was looking for there was because I was you know like anybody you know the first thing you want to do is try to find the actual map, the flat Earth map. And so I was looking around and I had found different maps and different projections. And the big one that I found was in Wiki. You can look it up. It's called the Azimuthal A Z I M U T H A L equidistant map. I call it the A E map. And it's really a top-down view of the world. If you squished a globe, if you put your hand on the North Pole and just squished it to where the North Pole became the center of a circular map, and yeah. the continents were kind of spread out to the outside, and then Antarctica would be squished to where it would be completely in, uh, encompassing the entire thing. It would circle the entire out, outer rim of the map. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And when I was looking at that map, there was a couple notations. Out of all the projections in, in Wikipedia, there was this map had a lot of interesting links to it. Uh, none of the other projections really did, other than the, the Mercator map, the one that, you know, that we see in schools. But this map was interesting because it was used by two groups. It was, these are the only groups that were attached to any projection. One was the USGS, which is the United States Geological Survey, which used it as part of one of their models in their catalog. And I was going, wow, that, that's kind of interesting. And that that particular projection was invented by a Persian scientist a thousand years ago named Al Biruni, and I, that was also interesting. I thought it was a typo, and I was going, why, why would why would the UN be using a projection done a thousand years ago by a per, Persian scientist when a thousand years ago we thought the Earth was flat? And then uh, then I was you know then Al Biruni was cross referenced to NASA directly. NASA actually you can get and look this up. It's it's sitting there in wiki nasa named a moon crater after al Biruni. that's good okay that's another coincidence that's kind of fun what else is there and then the 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 big one though for that projection was that it was also used by the un flag so when you everybody knows what the un flag looks like if you want to know what the flat earth looks like just yeah. click, you know just, just google uh the un flag and uh -huh. the and that map was created in 1946, or the flag was finished in 1946 and, and then imposed on, on the flag. But it was interesting because that map is slightly different from the others because Antarctica isn't on there. 
conspicuously mm-hmm. not on there at all. Conspicuously. I have a and, question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, since we're talking about maps and, um, you know, I, I, this, this might be something you've never been asked before, but I can't think, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of it as you were speaking, but I'm trying to think of the name of this, the map that was discovered. Um, I think it was discovered I, in the 40s or 50s, I could be wrong. Basically, this is a map that was drawn or yep. it goes yep. back about 500 years, I believe, or 1,000 years or whatever it is, and it, or it, it was drawn, and, and it shows um, how the Earth would look before the person at the time could have possibly known, or I really wish I knew the name of the map because you might know exactly what I'm talking about, but basically it involves um, Antarctica. The, the, there's no way this guy could have known what the land would have looked like. Oh, shows I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a projection map. I know which one you're talking no. about. It shows yeah. it shows the coastline of Antarctica yes. and the coast and the coastline of of uh, South America. South America. It's really, yeah. yeah, it's a really limited map, and it's really old, and it's really interesting because Antarctica in this map has no snow on it. Right. It's, um. It's not. It's not frozen, and it's so very detailed. And, and, and the Here's my question. Are... Okay, go ahead. Does 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 that contradict it? Like so, in other words, does Antarctica have to be frozen to to disprove or prove the theory, or or, or can it be a wall of maybe something? Do you understand no, no, what I mean? It, like... it 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 doesn't have to be frozen at all uh, to to work for for Antarctica to, to pull this off. Now it really helps if it's frozen from a technology standpoint, because here's why. And, and for the people that don't know exactly what how Antarctica is laid out, here's what happens. Well, hey, hold, real, to, real quick, real quick. Answer that, and then, answer that and then come back to me, because I want to throw something else at you that's going to that's gonna coincide with, with Antarctica oh, okay. being frozen, okay. helping. Go, go ahead. Got it, got it, got it. So what, how Antarctica is now is that if you go to the coastline of Antarctica, it has cliffs that go about 200 feet straight up in every direction for as far as the eye can see. It was very, very hard for even the, um, the, the early explorers to make landfall because you just couldn't get, there was very few beachheads that you could actually get to. Once you get over that initial 200 foot uh, cliff, then it starts ramping up really, really quick to where it elevates to about 10,000 feet which is, you know, two miles high, and that's, you know, really, really high as far as... And then it plateaus at, at two miles, and that's pretty much the minimum height for most of it to where, uh, you know, yeah, there's some mountain ranges that go higher than that, but it is, it is about the, the most hostile climate you could ever imagine because, again, there's no plant life, there's no animal life, except for the emperor penguins on the coastline, and they don't really count. And... And plus you have really, really high elevations. So there's so many negative reinforcements there that it would, it would naturally push any civilization away from it anyway. Uh, now, does it have to be frozen? No, and I'll, I'll circle back to you now. It, it doesn't have to be frozen, but it helps because it, right. it, it, it stops the initial beach, uh, uh, beach landings. It keeps people away, and like you said, plus the corporation. So, so now we have two things: the corporations can't even think about thinking about it. Yeah, you know, that's one. And then, yeah, we'll, oh, we're gonna real quick, but yeah, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we'll get right back to it. All okay. right, Mark, stay on with us while we take a quick break. You got it. Welcome back to Authentic Enlightenment Radio. I am your co-host Andrew Pomprion, joined by our other co-hosts. Mark Cummins and Michael Wagner, and of course, joined by our guest, Mark Sargent, talking about the flat earth theory. Welcome, everybody, if you just joined us, and uh, let's get right back in. You want you guys with us? Yep. Come here. Yep, radio. Awesome, awesome. So, Mark, I got a question for you. Well, a few questions, sure. anyway. Do you sure. think that, like, other planets, like the Sun, Saturn, Jupiter, are sphere, spherical? I think some of them are spheres. Uh, so in the model that I use, uh, you, I think it's, it's kind of like a, a modified planetarium. So when you go into a planetarium, I don't know how long you guys, you know, I'm, I'm a little older, so I've, I've been to a few in my life. But mm-hmm. in a regular planetarium, the stars and the planets, you know, everything from, you know, Venus through Saturn, 
um, they're all two-dimensional objects that seem like they're three-dimensional. The only things in question here are the sun and the moon because they are so prominent in the sky that every model that I've looked at, really they're, with the exception of one or two, uh, they're three-dimensional objects. You know, the moon is just really a giant nightlight and the sun is just really a giant light, light bulb. But they're both self-illuminated. Uh, and for those who want to see an interesting take on the moon, if you think, well, no, no, you know, the sun reflects, you know, the, I'm sorry, the moon reflects the sun's light, you know, look up, uh, just go on either YouTube or Google and, and type in the words lunar waves and you will find some amazing, amazing footage, uh, HD footage that was taken just a couple of years ago that show the moon is, not only is it apparently it's self-illuminating, but it seems to have uh, some resolution problems as, as of late. So yeah, uh, short version, sun and the moon, three-dimensional objects, way, way smaller and closer than we are led to believe. Uh, the sun is not 93 million miles away. The moon is not 237,000 miles away. They could be approximately the same size in the sky. We don't know. Now, if you want to use a biblical, script, uh, biblical quote, yeah, God made the sun, moon, and the stars, but NASA was the one that said how big they were and how far they were away. I know NASA lies, but I don't think you know they, they completely lie about everything. Who, NASA or science? NASA. Uh, I mean, here's here's the problem. I try not to that. throw all logic out, you know. Like I, I know, I know, and it's it look it was tough for me too. Uh, and and I've watched a lot of people over the last six months run into this, and that is, yeah, a lot of people will say, okay, you know, the Apollo, maybe maybe the Apollo missions were faked, but but don't take away the ISS. Okay, maybe the ISS had problems, but don't take away satellites. Don't take away, you know, the space shuttle or Skylab or whatever you can think that's up there. The problem is this. Once you look at the origins of NASA, where they came from and what their whole purpose was, can you really trust them with anything? I mean, look, if they're going to lie about the Apollo program, they're going to lie about anything they can get away with. And mm -hmm. everything I can tell, that's what they've been doing since 1958, since they were created. Well, you, you just mentioned something that, um, what about satellites? I mean, how do you, this, you know, how do you explain that? I don't trust and, it. And, and, and the sun and, and the moon and, you know, all that stuff. How, how do you explain it? Think of it this way. These guys, if, if NASA was built, if they were designed in 1958 to militarize space, to keep private space programs, and they have done a bang-up job of doing it, keeping spot, private space programs from doing anything up in space, then they have had 50 or 60 years to perfect their craft. And for the most part, they've gotten away with it. And they've gotten away with it pretty much on the cheap because, you know, the Internet didn't get fired up until, you know, not that long ago. HD cameras to detect stuff. But the big thing was high-speed Internet, social media, the Internet hive mind. Without the Internet hive mind, and I'll, I'll loop back to satellites for you, without the Internet hive mind, you're not going to know that the ISS footage is utter crap. And by that, I mean the interior footage. The exterior footage, not that terrible. I mean, yeah, it's got some problems, but it's not nearly as bad as the interior footage where they're showing the people in the polo shirts and their khakis walking around and every, everything's a, you know, it's a sunny, happy day, you know, shiny, happy people all the time. It's horrible footage on the interior. But... What that does is it leads to another question, and that is, okay, if we have the technology to put people in a space station, then why are we faking it? Why are we pretending that there's people up there? If you have the ability to do it for real, then why not spend the money and do it? And for me, it was obvious, you know, which came back to the moon footage, which is why it answered, this answered for me an old, old question, because there was something, yeah, I'm a conspiracy guy, but there was a question that bothers me. I don't like the 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 so-so the, the answers, which is, why do you fake the moon landings? Why even bother? You know, it, it's like, fine, right. you put an American flag up there. It doesn't make any sense. But this changes that, which means it's, it, change, it, free, it rephrases it into something that isn't even a question. It's not that they wanted to fake it. They had to fake the moon landings. If they do not fake the moon landings, if they do not go up there and mil take a military shot of the Earth from space and simulate it and fake the whole thing, then eventually the private program is going to get involved because every, you know if there's a nickel to be made, if there's money to be made, there are co corporations that will get it that will get tied to this thing. 
And so anyway, back to your satellite question though. If I can't trust the people footage on you know the 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 inner in, inner shots in the ISS, then how can I trust satellites at all? When I know full well that you could compensate and pretend to do it with customized AWAC planes, spy planes that cap out at 20 25 miles roughly, you could do just a, you could simulate just about any satellite you wanted. I, and still, you know, maintain that the satellite program is viable. And if you think, you know, that the satellites are completely bulletproof and, and uh, that there's no problem there, then ask why the GPS system, you know, the, the global, I have, to, I have to say it, the global positioning system, which should have blanket coverage over the entire world if it's a globe, why are there these massive uh, chunks of real estate in the southern hemisphere over the oceans that are not being tracked? Why not? And it's, it's, it's obvious. It wasn't obvious for me when I made the clues, but it is now. It's that they do not have coverage down there because the satellites aren't there. They're just not. Okay. So last year I was down in a Port Arthur, and mm-hmm. there was these huge ships, you know, like these tanker ships. And I watched yep. one sail off into the horizon. Now, yep. how come the, the ship disappears from bottom up? Wouldn't that prove that the Earth is kind of spherical? You would, you would think so. However, there was a video that was released just two weeks ago, and I'm not going to be able to do it justice without looking it up, but I, I, will, I will get the name for you in a second here. But it was done by, I think, Zetetic. One second, let me find this for you. But basically what they were showing was he did a big test with, with unedited footage you know, of the ships going to the horizon, and it's really just refraction. And he compared this to a, uh, a salt flats down in Chile, down in South America. It, it, it's, it's an illusion. It's not, you don't, you're not seeing what you think you're seeing. Yeah, the bottom is being chopped up, but the top part isn't going down perspective-wise the, in, at the same rate that you would expect if it was going over horizon. Basically, refraction is eating the bottom of that ship. And you don't notice it because of what you're expecting to see. You, you want to see the horizon, and therefore, when the ship, from the bottom of the ship goes, you immediately think horizon. But that's not it. It's all refraction. And, and let me look it up for you real fast here. One second. I will, um, I will, go ahead. Is it, uh, before the break, I, had, I was getting into something, and um, I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember what it was, uh, what I was getting into. I don't know if anyone remembers. Um, Antarctica? Yeah, it was uh, something. Na- NASA, the uh, Admiral Byrd. Uh, you were talking about the UN flag. UN the flag? UN map. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I'll, I'll keep that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So I, got, I got that video for you. So um, if, you, if you get a chance, look up... Uh, there's a, there's a, um, uh, a video called... Uh, the Chicago Skyline Light Refraction on YouTube. You can look it up. The Chicago Skyline Light Refraction. It was just done on the 25th. And this guy, okay. and he's got a really big brain, uh, he goes into, and I've interviewed him, his name is Jeffrey Grupp, and uh, he goes into the refraction issue as far as the boats going over the horizon, and he just crushes it. He just, he absolutely takes it apart to the point where I mean, yeah, it's about an hour long, but you've got to really watch the whole thing, but it's, uh, it's totally worth it. Boat go over the horizon, I used to think that may have been a problem. Uh, not anymore, I don't. So, anyway, sorry, did you, oh. did you still have a question about the UN flag, or did somebody have something else? I, I had a, a question about the... I just wanted you to explain the Coriolis effect. Got it. And we're, are we talking the, uh, the the shooting part of it, or are we talking about the skies, ro- the stars rotating in opposite directions? Um, either or. I mean, I, I okay. shoot a lot of guns too, and at 400 yards, you really got to adjust your uh, sight. Yeah, yeah, you do. But I have yet, and I shoot a lot too, and I've never seen any manual or any, anything in 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 anything I've ever read, and I've read a lot of periodicals, it's, it's windage and it's elevation. You know, it's, it's, it's gravity. As far as the coal is, in fact, I got a great thing. I, I've been getting emails from military guys recently. I got one uh, just a couple of days ago. And he was, fire, he, he was uh, part of the artillery thing over in Iraq. And he was saying that, uh, let me read it real quick here. It's funny you'd mention that. 
because I was attached to an artillery unit during a tour in Fallujah where we consistently shot miles and miles away with variable timed fuses, blah, blah, blah. Um, he goes, uh, and never, never did I ever really hear any corrections made for curvature of the earth, spin, or Coriolis. Mind you, they're doing this with a computer, yet there's always a backup guy doing it analog with a charting table and maps, calling out everything he's doing. And he goes, and if the computers didn't match the guy, then they wouldn't fire. Never did he uh, see an equation that this guy had that ever had to deal with any of that stuff. Now, when it comes to that, that's the well, that's dealing with the stuff on the ground. When it comes to stars spinning differently in the sky, what I try to tell people is this: Look. If you can understand the concept of a planetarium, because we've been doing this in software since about 2004, anyone has any has any uh, arguments about that, just you know, go and log on to Warcraft. It's free now. You, you'll see it in the sky. But if you are in a planetarium, if that planetarium is big enough, you can have multiple projection systems inside the same planetarium. So if you're standing on one end and your buddy's standing on the other end, and you say, hey, I'm looking at the constellation of Orion. And he says, hey, I'm looking at Orion too. Well, here's the problem. Yeah, it is. But technically, you both think you're looking at the same constellation of Orion, but you're not. You're looking at two completely separate projections of it. You don't, but you wouldn't know any different because you're not in this, you know, you can only be in one place at the same, you know, at one time. This is, again, we've been doing this since 2004 in software. And that's, that's my argument. I know it's tough for people to get their head around, but that's what it so, is. I think it's kind yeah, of I'm interesting. Not lie. That, it, that is tough to. It, yeah, right. Again, you, it's, it, again, this is such a big topic that there are some concepts well, that are literally physically that your mind will brace against it. it here, but but again, I, uh, no, no different. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just really quick before I lose it again, I, I remembered what I was getting into before a break that I just want to bring up. Um, so we were talking about Antarctica being frozen and all that, and yeah. it's how you also mentioned um, earlier how there seems to be, or maybe you might have alluded to it, that there may seem to be some things happening now um, that may be getting for like maybe an announcement or something happening. Is is that without getting into it? Is that what you were? Is that true? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I'm hinting at. This, this right. thing. This thing is a topic this year for some reason, and I don't know why. I, now, I would have I would have laughed you out of the building last year if you would have brought this up to me. Now, also, okay, now maybe this could relate to it. Um, I, I was thinking about this. They recently came out, okay, so the whole global warming thing, okay, that was the biggest thing ever, you know, in the past yeah, decade. Yeah, are, you climate, the biggest, are you a climate change skeptic, Mark? Who? Me? You. Yeah. No, no, although I don't well, know what to make okay. of it. Well, hold I don't on. Know let, me, to... let me just finish real quick. This, this is because this is the, the big thing here is it, it's almost um, me. I think we, I've always kind of said it because of people in my family that were, well, I'm not going to that. Basically, they're, they're announcing that, you know, by 2030 or 2040 or whatever it was, that we're going to be in an ice age, right? The, the planet's yeah. cooling. This has been the trend for 20 years or so. Um, you know, 2,000 scientists say it's global warming. The other 2,000 say it's global cooling. Um, is this global cooling, if that is happening, is that something that could be related to spraying chemtrails, right, to cool the yeah. planet? And then also, is that to keep Antarctica frozen? Do you think there's a correlation there? No, no, I don't. I think it's something else. Um, chemtrails, uh, that's such a tough one because... Yeah, of course they're real. I, I'm not going to ever deny that they, that they they don't exist. But for me, because people aren't dropping dead in in great numbers in fields, you know, I just don't know what to make of it. Is it is it being used on multiple levels? Yeah, maybe. Um, but when it comes to climate change or or global stuff, what you're talking about there, I think that in an enclosed system, I think we've been messing. I think our technology has reached the point to where we're we have the ability to mess with the automated climate systems that are built into this system. You know, if you want to, want to pick a system, let's use HARP. Let's say HARP has the ability to create a typhoon here or a hurricane here, not to mention Katrina, you know, or, or a, you know, a tsunami here. 
these things all have backlashes. No different than if you're in a car, you know, with a with a portable fan. The car is going to try to compensate for whatever you're trying to do in there to to alter the temperature because that's what the car system does. So. Is there something going on with the weather in the world? Yeah, there's a lot of really wacky weather going out there. Do I think we're tied to it? Yeah, I really do think we're tied to it. But I, okay. think, it's a back, I think it's a backlash to what we're doing locally. Okay. Now, so you, would, you, would you say if, if this – so let's say we're looking at it from the point of it's not a globe, it is a dome, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, would, they, would it make – this is kind of a two-part question. Um, sure. would, they, would it make sense for them to keep Antarctica frozen? In other words, speed up the process to actually cause global cooling um, rather than global warming. Um, maybe what, what that... maybe it's, a, it's a good idea. I mean, if you want to here's, – here's the thing, and, and I, you know, I tried to put this in the clues, but if you don't want this thing to come out, you know, if, if, you're, you, know, if you want to stop this thing eventually – you're going to have to stage some sort of event. Either, you, either you're going to have to have a, a staged event or you're going to have to have something real happen. You know, something that if you want to use the, the global cooling like a, like a sudden ice age, like the day after tomorrow with uh, Dennis Quaid, you know, that sort of scenario, yeah, you could, you could pull that off. Uh, but oh, yeah. as, far as, keep, as far as keeping Antarctica frozen, they don't really need to. Because one, nobody's down there anyway. Nobody wants to go down there. And you've got, already got such a heavy military force protecting it. It really wouldn't matter if the coastline was frozen or not. Uh, you know, but so no, it, keeping right. Antarctica frozen at this point is not going to—it's not going to make much difference. And then I'll, after I see these last two parts here, I'll shut up and let the other guys go. Um, okay. First of all, and, and I don't—I hope it doesn't—it it could change the whole conversation and put put you maybe on a tangent. I don't know, but that's all right. So, some people, at least from from people I've talked to, said that if if you, that you can't have, and I'm not, I don't think this is so, but I've seen some people say that you can't have um, the flat Earth theory in the hollow Earth theory, right? Because the hollow Earth theory, in in some sense, depends on the Earth being a sphere, right? So that the it, inside it, of the sphere could be hollow. Yeah. And yeah. now some people. Oh, oh, yeah, oh you, want, that, you want me to? Well, real quick, let me also add this. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So some people think the trumpet sounds that we've been hearing, those those yeah. weird bell sounds, trumpet sounds, could be related to maybe a hollow earth, something happening in the hollow earth or so so kinda of go into that if if you know I'm sure you know about those trumpet sounds. Is that related yeah. to this at all or what do you uh, think about yeah. that in the hollow earth? Yeah, I and, and this isn't much of a tangent on my side. Uh, I was a Hollow Earth guy. I was a big Hollow Earth guy. I wanted to be on that ship years ago. Was that 10, 15 years ago when they were going to go to the North Pole and, and look for it? I can't remember that, the guy's name before he died. Um, I, was a, I was a big Hollow Earth guy. The Hollow Earth theory in, in, in this model does not conflict at all. You can still have the Hollow Earth and the Flat Earth, and here's why. You don't have to have uh, an 8,000 mile wide hollow Earth to pull to pull off the the legend of the hollow Earth because m most people forget because you know we you know it, 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 what's the saying uh, the, it's a it's a small world but I would not want to paint it uh, we the, our entire civilization lives between sea level and 5,000 feet that's 95 98 percent of our civilization lives in that very very narrow band so. Even in a flat Earth scenario, the hollow Earth with an opening at the North Pole, even if it was only a thousand miles deep, it would still be way more real estate than we're using right now. And so, so the hollow Earth does not conflict at all what, in my what model. Gets, what gets me here, um, again, I'll shut up after this. What gets me here is that whatever we throw at you, you actually have a very decent answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've, kind of thought, I've kind of thought that. For the most part. For the most of the and I'm, try, time. I'm trying to think of some pretty good shit to say here and ask, and I can't, this is why, this is why I keep saying that it's really interesting to me, because I can't Man, throw any... I tried to stomp this thing out for months and months, and uh, again, it wasn't, I, I know people have heard this before from me, but look, I didn't wake up one day and said, you know what I think is a great idea? Flat Earth. I think I'll champion that. That, that sounds like a great this, thing this to do. I'm going to call the Flat Earth Theory, I'm going to call it uh, the, the Napalm Effect, or, or like, 
you know, I don't, I don't know. It's like, uh, it's, it's just crazy. I don't know. You, you know what? You can't put out. You can't put it out. You know, you know what? Some guy. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, just a quick question. You probably got something for it. Um, Probably. The (laughs) the um. What about the differences in the hemispheres? Um, let's say, like the difference in the way that water um, rotates. You know. Oh, that's that's easy. That's that's easy enough. And and I'm not going to be one of those people that says that it doesn't exist because there's lots of people that go on on you know line and they say no, no, it's actually not happening. It's like, yeah, all right, fine. But I've heard too many stories to where it does happen. And honestly, if the, if the stars are moving in the opposite direction, then why wouldn't the drains move in the opposite direction as well? When it comes to something like that, that is really, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to do, but we, again, we've been doing that in, uh, from a software standpoint since, oh God, 96, 95, something like that. And really what the, the term I like to use is called a gravity well which is, you got to remember, because that leads into the gravity question, because people say, well, what is gravity on, a, on a, an enclosed system? What is gravity on a flat Earth? And I say, really? What's gravity on a globe? Because nobody knows exactly what gravity is. But for me, I try to explain it like this. I try to explain it like um, uh, a molecular magnet or molecular magnetism. So where you have a, like a magnetic material that can attract metal, imagine if you had a material that could attract anything at the molecular level, so organic, trees, clay, dirt, it makes no difference. You can attract it, which is really what, you know, is there any difference between molecular magnetism and gravity, you know, we, what we call gravity on a ball. If you had the power to control that, and by that I mean, you know, in a system like this, everything's got to have some sort of mechanical process to it, you know, from, from the jet stream to the underwater conveyor system. When it comes to gravity, you just change the torque spin, uh, you know, the rotation of it from clockwise to counterclockwise. It's, it's easy enough to do. I know it sounds kind of complicated, but, it's, it, again, we can do this now from a simulation standpoint very, very easily. So, so who does sh- this then? I'm sorry. Who's running the you show? Are. Yeah, who, I mean, you mentioned God earlier. Who, well, who's pulling the strings here? Takes, take it your pick. It seems like a lot of it, illusion. It, it, it is a lot of illusion, but we've bought it. You know, if, 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 is it really an illusion if the entire civilization buys it for 5,000 years? It's, it's the greatest trick of all time. So, because, and people say, well, it's the divine or it's, it's an advanced technology. You can really go only one of two ways. And I say, well, yeah, it's advanced technology. That means God subcontracted out the work. And, but even God has his or her or its tools, which means even God programs. And so... Is it is it proof of intelligent design? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's the thing that it's uh you know they say <clears throat> excuse me in the Bible they said what was it Jesus was a carpenter or something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know maybe uh, maybe he was maybe he built this planet or like you said maybe he didn't want to do this project and he contracted the work out. I mean you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or or <laughs> or help design a civilization that helped design it. I mean, was God a programmer? <laughs> You know, it's it's tough to say because people they keep you know people I'm not to delve into theology too much, but you know they say well you know God's divine and he could just will things into existence. So I'm just going you know even God's got a hammer and a chisel, you know that that he would use stuff, which is why I I kind of I didn't necessarily dodge it when I was doing the clues, but this is what's going to boil down to anyway, and which is if this thing gets found out, the major religions of the world, the big five, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity. They're all going to look at this from a divine standpoint. You know, they are all going to see the handprint of God. And what they choose to do with it, well, you know, that's a big responsibility and can't wait to see, you know, how that, how that rolls out. But, uh, yeah, for, for me, from a personal standpoint, you know, I was raised, uh, I was raised born again Christian. And, you know, I, I would say, yeah, you know, if there's any other proof of intelligent design that's bigger than this, I'd love to see it. So. You guys, uh, Mark, and you guys got any questions on deck, or can I ask one real quick? No, um, uh, yeah. I guess the the lunar eclipse and how it creates like shadow curves on the moon. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was one of my questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that doesn't conflict at all because it, again, you got to look up you, you, people who are listening to this. You got to look up lunar waves if you get a chance. It's done by a um, a guy on YouTube named Crow Triple Seven C R R O W seven seven seven. He's been interviewed a lot, 
But to answer that question, what you're saying there, lunar waves, no, di- I'm sorry, not lunar waves, uh, the, the crescent moon and the half moon and the, and the curved shadows, those are no different. If you're going to ask that, you might as well ask about the blood moon because they're all the same thing. Because in a flat model, you're absolutely right. There is no earth between the sun and the moon to cast the shadow, which means the moon's shadows have to be absolutely artificial, which means the moon is probably artificial to a certain, you know, to what extent, you know, that's still up for debate. But well, I think it's a... Go ahead. There's a theory that, that the moon was towed here. I mean, that's something I've heard many times. Oh, yeah. Moon, yeah, those yeah. those old legends, I love those old legends where they said there was a time in, right. in history where there was no moon in the sky. Right. Or, or if you go back yeah. even further, where they said that there was no sun in the sky, that it was just light mm-hmm. and it was dark. And then there was, it was like this thing evolved over time, like it was a version 1.0 and a 2.0, and it got more advanced as, you know, as this thing, you know, whoever was building this thing got better and better at it, you know, at, at uh, creating the, uh, the civilizations in question. All right, uh, real quick, I got to ask this, Scott. The, very, the first time I ever heard that Flat Earth was uh, even <laughs> being questioned again, or yeah. brought up again, and I say again, like we've experienced it before. We haven't, you know. But uh, anyway, we haven't really, not for a while. You know, yeah, not not at least not as popular. But anyway, the point is, like you know, I think of the game Asteroid, right? The game Asteroid, yeah. like uh, you know, the the, the the original game where you, you you go to the left of the screen, and you come out on the right side, you know. Yep. Yep. And I think about that because uh, you know, again, when people think of flat Earth, they think of it as two dimensional, right? And again, yep. even with the dome theory, so a ship travels, and I'm going to go back 2,000 years with this question because this is where it goes, right? Back back okay. then, in the years of you know the early philosophers when they first brought these questions up, and they they said, well, you know, the Earth is flat, and they said, well, you'd fall off the side. Again, if a sh- how 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 does a plane travel around the Earth, right? If if the Earth yes. is flat, because you're gonna eventually you're gonna go. And it's not like you come up like on an asteroid you, in the game, asteroid or whatever, you come out the left side and come out back out to the right. How do you Excellent. go around in a circular motion um, got it. but being straight? Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that question I, I've gotten since day one, and there's, there's several yeah, right. ways to answer it. But I'll, I'll give you the ships and I'll give you the planes. When it comes to, because you've got to look at, get, for people who are trying to visualize this at home, just pull up the UN flag or you can type in flat earth map or whatever and you'll see it. So you have the North Pole at the center and all the continents laying around it. So you get to remember, from a compass point of view, if you want to go way back to either the star systems or the compass, you know, where you're going magnetic north, the compass will still work perfectly fine because north is the dead center of the map, so you're not going to know any different. As far as circling around the Earth, that's exactly what they're doing. They're just going around literally like a needle on a record player. So, and it's so big, you know, as far as the circumference goes, that if you're going tens of thousands of miles, if you're actually trying to circumnavigate the entire globe, you're so not going to notice. Go so ahead. you're saying you're saying that they're not necessarily going straight. They're actually just following magnetic north, and it's pulling them, in yeah. a sense, like, and they're, so they're just facing north, and they're actually yeah. swiveling. Ever, <laughs> swiveling ever so around, slight, pivoting. yeah. Pivoting. Yeah, okay. ever so slightly. And you'd never know. If you're in a boat, especially in a boat, you're never going to know that you're not going straight because you're, you know, you're making a, a slight left hand or a right hand turn every so many hundred miles. You're, you're just not going to be able to detect it. With planes, and that's why it's starting to fall apart now, with planes, it's, they, they were also having problems. You want to have some, some fun, look up why Amelia Earhart may have actually crashed. That whole story completely has a different context now. But then the GPS system goes online in 1995, and don't think for a second that that system was, was an accident. That system was partially designed not just to track where you're going, but also to help guide you where they want you to go, where they think, to, to let you know where you think you are. So the GPS system goes online in 1995, and it tells the planes where they think they are, but in truth, they're kind of guiding them around. So nobody's ever, yeah, if you're absolutely right, if you could go dead on straight, in any good direction, ignore the compass, ignore the, the, the stars, ignore the GPS system. Eventually, no matter which direction you went, you would always run into the coastline of Antarctica. No, but, I'm sorry. But I'm, nobody I'm real sorry. I know these guys have questions too, and I keep interrupting everyone. Um, uh, <laughs> I got to ask people disappearing, whether it's the Bermuda Triangle, this yeah. gives a whole new thought to me. Are, are people that are, going, that are going on these flights or, or, or on these voyages, are they ignoring the? Are they ignoring uh, 
the the you know are, are they ignoring their compass and then and then driving straight into the hands of the military and being and being captured and killed? Is that what it, is that? When, is when that it comes what? to Bermuda, no, I've I've gotten the Bermuda Triangle question before, <clears throat> and really, well, I try to tell people there because you know because that's just the Atlantic Ocean. I think that's just a mechanical failure. I think there's something either left over from a previous civilization, you want to call it Atlantis or you know the whatever group you want to call it. But I think there's some older technology that's just screwing up guidance systems down there and and atmosphere and the whole nine yards. There's some bad stuff down underneath there. But I don't think it necessarily has to do with the builders themselves. I think it's just a previous I think it's just leftover um uh wreckage from from some previous civilization that was that's no longer with us. Okay, but the, all right. So I'm saying though, but, not necessarily just the Bermuda Triangle, but you're dry, you ignore. Oh, everything oh but else. if you want, but other people that are disappearing. Oh yeah, the government's gonna. This is the tightest secret you could ever think of. Uh, you want to have fun? Look up how many astronomers have died in the last twenty, thirty years. Uh, which of course w- would be a natural progression as astronomy um, uh, technology has gotten better over the years. They would have the best chance of detecting first the problem with the ceiling. Uh, explorers, what you're saying, yeah, if they if they discount things and try to go for broke and, and go in a certain direction, yeah, yeah, there are government groups that would that would pick them up and take care of them and maybe disappear them. Uh, you know, wh- why those Malaysian flights disappear? You know, why they fall off GPS? We don't know exactly. You know, do people really think that a flagship triple seven can just be lost? You know, for no apparent reason. That's state of the art stuff. If, they, if that can be lost, then anything can be lost. Mark, but yeah, it, it, well, Mark, people. Uh, yeah, so go ahead. Stop you real quick. We're gonna we're gonna take another quick break here. Sure. And, you want to uh, stick we're, around? Yeah, we're gonna have you stick around if you'd like. Yeah, you bet. Awesome. We're back. Right. Welcome back to Authentic Enlightenment Radio, everyone. This is your co-host Andrew Pomprion, joined by Mark Cameron Cummins, Michael Wagner, and our guest. Welcome back, everyone. Is everyone with us? Yep. I'm here. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. And our, I, I didn't finish off Mark Steven, uh Sergeant, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think uh, Chris is going to be trying to call in as well. Um, so as soon as he does, if he does, he will announce himself, I believe. So he's th- he's trying trying very hard to get through. So we're cool. nearing our final hours of the show. And yeah. I guess I got one last question for you because we we've asked you a lot of questions tonight. Hopefully they are good. <laughs> I like questions. It's okay. But I I've always heard that the worst thing a man can do to himself is lie to himself. So I gotta ask you an honest question here. Do you sure. really believe the Earth is flat? Like in your Had gut, you, down in in you, in, you think in my really gut. Is? I'll, I'll I'll give you the the the. 60, 60, 90 second answer to that, which was, had you asked, had you asked me that last summer before I really started digging into this thing, I would have said, absolutely not. Uh, you know, literally would have laughed you out, out of the building and would have said that, you know, that you were an idiot for even, for even broaching the subject, like, like a lot of people. But here we are, July of 2015. And I can honestly say that by the time I got to clue two, or, you know, pushing two to three, I had no doubt in my mind um, because of the background where I came from, everything rang true to me. You know, I was when I was trying to debunk this thing, I was trying to look at it and say, you know, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe this thing out. I should be able to knock this thing out. And then after a while, I said, okay. If I actually had to design this from scratch, if I had to build this thing, if I had to rebuild the world flat and I had to hide it from everybody, how would I do it? And as I was going through that, I realized that I wouldn't change a thing. This this place is designed, if people want to latch onto the divine side of it, that's fine. This place is designed perfectly. And everything works so much better in an enclosed system than it does in a globe uh, to the point now where you know I, I have no I have no doubt in my mind that it is uh, a flat enclosed system. You guys still there? All there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm ready. Well, We're ready. To... I'm just making. Answer your question, Michael. Yeah. Uh, 
That was on record. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I couldn't know. People have said, are you kidding me? You know, are you selling something as yeah. an ulterior motive? And I've said, look, I, I'm not selling a I'm not selling even a coffee mug or a T-shirt uh, at this point. So I couldn't I couldn't have faked it this long. Had uh, had I wanted to conjure this up from scratch, you know, I've had. In fact, my conviction now is even stronger than it was uh, when I first did the clues. So. All right, I have. I actually, I think I can stump you now. Uh, oh. I've, I've been thinking. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Throw me the clue. And it's kind of seems like something that wouldn't stump you, but I got it. Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> the, the, we all know that the, that NASA, um, you know, in the space program and the Apollo mission um, specifically, yeah. right? The people yeah. behind the Apollo mission were very, and we actually mentioned it on our last show. A lot of them were, you know, into Saturnalia. Um, they were sun worshippers. They were part of the Lunar Society, the Lunar Cult, you know, all that incorporated in, incorporated into one, right? So yeah. they did they did the first Apollo mission on a specific date. They wanted to land at a specific time, and they did a specific ritual, Masonic uh, ritual, on yep. the moon. Why yep. would they do that? And then why would that information come out? Uh, okay, you could say it's disinformation. People like us would believe it. Okay, fine, but <clears throat> it's actually well documented. People have talked about it. They've talked about it. I think even Buzz Aldrin might have alluded to it a couple times. Why? Oh, you mean why? Uh, why go through all the trouble? Well, yeah, why, yeah, they didn't really well, okay, do. It. No, I got. I I got I got it. I got you on this one because here's. <laughs> Here's the thing with with the Masons, and and keep in mind, I'm not I, I'm not going to call out too many groups, but yes, if, if some people have said, well, you know, what secret society has known about this? The Masons, I have absolutely no doubt, and I won't necessarily go into it in great detail right now, but the Masons knew full well what this place was. They were one of the groups that that knew that we were not the the world wasn't what we think what we think it is. But when it comes to numerology and rituals. And the, the, the comprehensive uh, layout of how things should be, you know, as far as timing goes, dates and times and, uh, and what you're supposed to do, the rituals still have to happen even if you're faking it. It doesn't have to be real. You know, as long, if, if all the world's a stage and everything is just theater, I mean, the, the Masonic rituals, are, most of those are really just theater anyway. If it's all just theater, you're still going to go through with it. So all the all the numbers and every all the pageantry that's involved with that, you still don't have to put real men on the moon to to pull that off. You know, you're, you're still just you're just going through the motions. Uh, Bar, you're, you're gonna Bar, you're gonna do it. You're, you're, yeah. you're good. You are good. Let me tell you. <laughs> Well, no, I, I, I happened. To, I did a lot of research on the Masons, and I know full well yeah. that that you know. It, well, look at. I don't want to get into it too much, but look at all the the numerology and symbology that went through the Twin Towers stuff. Oh, you know, that's. And, and that, yeah, and, I was actually going to just say. I was actually just going to bring that up because that was a yeah. that, that in itself was actually a giant. Um, Masonic ritual in its own way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It the size, the size and scope of it doesn't mean it, you know doesn't make any difference. It's it's the ritual is what's important. So even if there's a bigger staged event that's coming down the road, which I which could be the reason why people are latching onto this so much because, you know, the conspiracy world has gotten so much bigger, and uh, I think people have been looking for the next big lie. You know, they've been kind of waiting for it. And here's the, the the joke is it's like oh you were waiting for the next big lie turns out you were on it the entire time and nobody <laughs> got it you fell for it anyway uh, not not because you know you weren't looking for it just because you were so you think it. basically you're saying maybe the next 911 or or bigger than 911 would be some sort of un un uh, unearthing yeah. rather like an unveiling of the flat earth basically is yeah yeah P people have asked me that several uh, a whole bunch of times actually and there's only two events that i can think of that you you could really tie this to i mean something this big it really limits your ability to uh, right. to you know to pick an event so it's really for me there's only one of two things you could use one you could use a really late to the party planet x event you know, yeah. you know, throwing in maybe plot Project Blue Beam or something like that, or mm. you could stage some sort of fake alien invasion. Alien, or, alien invasion, you know, yeah. 
you know, or, or whoever shows up. It doesn't necessarily have to be spaceships. They could show up and you could say, oh, look, angels, they're here to, you know, to, to save us, to do whatever. But you have to tie it in with this because that way they can say, oh, yeah, the world isn't what, what you think it is. Here, we can prove it to you. And, so, and not only that, but that goes into... That goes into, see, we created this, we made it the way it is. You're, like I said earlier, the Petri dish kind of thing where, you know, yeah. like the word culture. Oh, it's a, yeah. you, you, you know, this is that culture. And the word culture is like, it, it's a culture. It's created, it's managed, it's studied, it's, you know. That's yeah. the only reason why I gave this any thought at all is, A, yeah. like I said, it, it's just, it really is kind of fascinating and interesting, just, just the fact that it's even being talked about. And also because I've always had this thing with with thinking about the earth as uh, we've always been a culture. We've always been, we were here we're, and we were put here and we are being managed and not just managed, but we're being studied. And yeah. in a sense, I think the, what you're saying, if it was true, I'm, I still, I'm not, I'm not sold on it yet. <laughs> that okay. This could actually give that credibility. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, the, the the key is the key is is we have to act naturally. That's the the big the one of the biggest things because lots of people will say, well, I don't believe in aliens because of the old um, why hasn't the flying saucer landed on the White House lawn argument, and I'm going no 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 because you can't let that happen because it changes everything. Uh, that last Star Trek uh, movie proved that, and that is you can't have a spaceship of any size show up and land on Main Street, even if it's a small town, have somebody come out, take pictures, sign autographs, wave, and leave. You can't ever let that happen because it changes the, the fundamental uh, uh, paradigm of how people uh, view the universe and view themselves as in their place in it. So the whole point of this, for, or not the whole point, but a big chunk of this is we have to, we, they have to make sure that we're kind of left to our own devices. I am sure we're, we are being steered in certain directions at certain points in history, no question. But, you know, to date, no armada has ever landed in any country. The closest thing we ever had was the 1561 Nuremberg event, and that was a close call. Uh, had that been much later, I, I think we, we probably would have had a problem there. So. But, um, so, if, so if you got the opportunity to go into space yeah. and you actually found out the Earth was a sphere, what would you do? Would with I tell yourself? people? <laughs> oh no, I'd be I'd be fine. No people, no people have asked me that. Um, uh, I can't remember who the host was that asked me, but he he asked me. He goes he goes. Would you be okay if you were wrong? And I go I go yeah yeah, yeah of course I, of course I would. I mean it, here's the thing though. If I was wrong, I would not. I would not curl up in a fetal position in a corner and just start, you know, and grab a bottle and just start drinking. I wouldn't do that. But at the same time, what I've noticed is, look, I, when I put this thing out there back in February, I was hoping somebody would shoot it down. I would was hoping, yeah. and here we are now. And the internet hive mind, you know, the, the you know the the pro and the con, you know, they both work for the same thing. No one's had the ma found the magic bullet to shoot this thing down yet. And if it hasn't been found by now, you know how the speed things work now. If they haven't shot it down by now, then I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, NASA released that photo, what, a week ago? You know, the first they admitted, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's the first photo we've taken of Earth in 43 years, almost confirming what the flat Earth thing has been professing for the for five, six months. Um, uh, the, there's There's been no magic bullet so you know, to this point. It, couple... The what? I'm sorry. We've got a couple of, we get a couple of callers here in just a minute, so. Oh sure. Now, if, if 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 that's fine. If a magic bullet comes in and and torches this thing, <laughs> part of me will be relieved, believe it or not, because I never I never wanted to do this. This was not what I wanted to do in 2015. I yeah. I was hoping to you know be a, lead, lead a pretty quiet life, and now you know <laughs> everybody I'm getting all these phone calls and emails and and uh, you know but at the same time it's so positive. Uh, which is why I've been trying to spin it. I was going, look, this could actually do some, do uh, uh, the civilization some good if it came out, because I think there's a lot. Before, sorry, before we get into a couple of callers, uh, real, real, real quick. How, and yeah. if you can't get into it and there's not enough time, don't. But okay, you okay. said something about the Civil War in Russia, and that, that really interests me because I, I study the Civil War. And, he said. Okay. Yeah, and I have a whole different version of the Civil War than most people, so I'm interested I'll, I'll do, in 
I'll give you a real quick story. It'll take two minutes, but it's a good one. And that was everyone knows full well the Civil War was not about slavery, right? It, and it wasn't just about money. It was the last chance for Great Britain to take America. They tried in the, during the Revolutionary War. They tried in 1812, almost pulled it off, uh, finished off France, decided they'd come back, and their last shot was to send the advisors, get the South ready, uh, you know, full well. All the military weapons uh, supplied to the South, they were all Great Britain, all the ships, all the crews. Um, everybody was ready to go, and it was going to be the North versus uh, the South and the English Navy, basically, which would have been a completely different war. And the story goes, and I love this, that Lincoln, out of desperation, contacts the, the Tsar of Russia. I think it was Nicholas, I don't know, it was Nicholas I or the second. And he sends a letter to Russia, and he says, he says, basically in the letter, he goes, keep England out of the war entirely. And Russia contacts England because, you know, a lot of people admired Lincoln at the time, foreign dignitaries anyway. Russia contacts England, says, if you get in, we get in. And it would have been the First World War, you know, back in you know, the 1860s, which would have been fantastic. And because of that, the South was hung out to dry. The South didn't have a chance against the North. Most people didn't know that. It was over in five years. But the... Uh, America, even though it was heavy, heavy in debt, they owed Russia for that. And so Russia sold them a seemingly pe worthless piece of real estate right after the end of the Civil War, and we know it now as Alaska. And it's, a, it's a great little, little tidbit. But, of course, you know, England uh, uh, wanted, wanted payback after that. And so because, you know, Lincoln was basically the guy that screwed up the whole thing. I, I so, just want to – I just need to try to figure out how that fits into – um, I don't know if you know anything about the 14th Amendment and how the the North really just, you know, wanted to conquer every, you know, obviously it wasn't about slavery, but to put every... So there we go. Caller on the line. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, we got? there we go. I, 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 I had to uh, mute Andrew because he just won't stop talking. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You get the point. You get the point now, Andrew. We like you. <laughs> I like Andrew. I like Andrew. But who who do we got for a caller? What's the question? A a a anyway, uh, this is Chris. I I'm I'm actually the host of the show. I just hey, finally Chris. got connected. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes waiting for Andrew to be quiet, and he keeps uh, bringing up different subjects and. Finally, I had to mute him because nobody, nobody else on the show wanted to uh, say anything either. Oh, well, it's impolite to say. interrupt, and you're such a polite guy, uh, Mark. <laughs> you, you guys had ample opportunity to do it. So uh, anyway, yeah, there's two of us on here. We also have a uh, 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 James Wright on with us. What's up, James? Greetings, citizens. Tis I, James Robert Wright from Hollywood. <laughs> oh, wow. Going, that's that's the best lead in I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? I hear something, something Masons, and something, something Flat Earth bullshit. What now? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Careful. <laughs> you know, it was Masons of the Vatican who originally proposed that idea in the 1300s to keep everybody stupid. So... You don't say. Do you think it's NASA propaganda or no? I just spent the day with a NASA JPL quantum physicist uh, two weeks ago at a Bee Gees concert. And the reason in so doing was to scout him from ParanoiaCon, which I'm hosting in October. And he told me lots of raise the hairs on the back of your neck little tidbits. And no, the Earth is quite round. So. Oh, wow. Well, that solves and, it. We're uh, you know, the show I mean, now, if, if, if you want to take a look into, like, more ancient stuff, how do you explain the Pi Rays map? And, and that map could have only been drawn from someone who had the ability to travel high up in maybe, say, a, a hot air balloon or whatever and chart things from the – you know what I mean? So, the, I mean, it's just – come on. I, I was recently I down in San Diego on business. Yeah, and I, I brought had a that up. confront me very arduously insisting that uh, I give this audience and how wrong I am and how right he was and blah, blah, blah. And he, uh, we had a dry erase board. I, I was at the magazine office. So he went to the dry erase board and started to illustrate for me 
with a marker how this flat earth thing works and everything. And I, I just looked at him like, well, you're making absolutely zero sense. No, none of what you're what you're suggesting is that we're just like this flat piece of land and that we just flop over. So I mean, come on, it, you're you're discounting that, that, every that's bit your of argument? science, that's it? physics, all of it. You're you're gonna you're gonna tell me that there is a conspiracy so wide and so vast sweeping that it, it affects every single last individual scientist, astronomer, astrologer. Every, uh, meteor, uh, me meteorologist, everybody? No. No. There's, there's conspiracies in this world, but this ain't one. Sorry. Ta-da! Fantastic, <laughs> you solved it. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> well, I mean, your, I just... your, reaction, your reaction is exactly what I, what, what I was hoping for. Because that is, if you don't have a reaction like this, again, anyone's listening out there, if you do not react like this right away, then there is something wrong with you. But if you let this thing stick in your head long enough, you'll see it. Well, we're think, well, isn't, putting us, first of all, it's one giant shit distraction. Second, it's putting us back into a medieval mentality, which goes to further fuel this other thing going on in the world right now, which is them trying to start up a holy war. So what better way than to take us all back into a 1300s mentality and send us all off on some goddamn crusade again? Quit playing into their games. You know, and I, it, it doesn't. This subject doesn't make me mad. It's just another example of how I do not suffer fools very well. Oh no, so, I, can, I can actually hear the anger in your in your voice. Well, yeah, because it's counterproductive, Chris. <laughs> it's it's. So it's, it's, so ludicri it's ludicrous that, we that we're even talking about it, right? It's total insanity. Yes, it's ludicrous that somebody came and interrupted a party at the office in San Diego with this shit. It's, it's ludicrous that it has websites dedicated to it and people really wholeheartedly believe this. I guess it's the same type of people that believe that they're going to be stuffed into a FEMA coffin tomorrow. I, 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 whatever. You know, it's not going to happen. It, it's... <laughs> No, it's good. No, I, I completely, believe me, man, I understand where you're coming from. I do. I was you last year. Completely. I, I would not look at this thing. I would have laughed anyone out of the room. And now that has changed. There is, there is no way I can go back after, after what I've seen. It's, it's amazing. And, and for you, hey, what great. Do you mean, what do you, you mean wanna... go back with what you've seen? What is, what is it that Me, you've seen? Meaning, meaning... <laughs> Wait, you, you, have you 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 haven't watched any of this stuff yet? You you've just been introduced to the topic, and that's about it. No, I've actually versed myself quite well in it to know what kind of monster I'm dealing with. But what is it that you when you say what you've seen? What is, how how do you mean that? In what context did it personally cause? Meaning, you some when sort of I epiphany? when I looked when I looked at all the evidence, when I visualized everything that was laid out from A to Z, what evidence? There is no. God, we don't we don't have time to. You're, you're coming in too late to to. No, no, to no. I'm, I'm what I'm saying. I'm being sarcastic. There's zero evidence. So what? Oh, evidence? okay. Well, fantastic. Well, then you don't have to deal with it anymore. You should you should hang up. Okay. Don't Love seriously. You, don't don't. Call later. Bye. Sorry <laughs> about that. And Mark, that. But... And, and and I have to apologize because I did antagonize him a bit, but and I don't know who he was, but. <laughs> This is what I deal with from time to time. There are people there that react really, really uh, in a hostile fashion, I should say, for, for lack of a better term. They do not. This is, this is no different, and I'll use the Neo reference from the Matrix. When Neo was first told by, by Lawrence Fishburne when they were sitting in the chair, and he freaked out, and he goes, get me out of here. And even when he was pulled out of the Matrix, he was just swinging until he blacked out. I get this in maybe one out of five, one out of six people who just do not want their world being messed with. They they don't they don't want it to happen. And uh, uh, you know, I, I just I don't know. I thought I thought I was being at least somewhat objective, but I, I have I'm being told from people, uh, multiple people actually. I just looked at my Facebook saying, "Oh, you're not you're not asking questions and you're not being objective." And 
You know, uh, so I don't know. I'm getting criticized just for, I guess, entertaining the thought. But I'm, I'm just oh, well, you, and, and you and you will every. And I should have warned you. If there's a chat thing, if this, you know, this is live and you've got people coming in chat. Every single show that I've done that has had live chat rooms, people come in just hot, and they say, "I can't believe you're talking to this guy." I can't believe you're discussing this topic on air. You, you, you're better off talking about lizard people and royalty. You're better <laughs> talking about FEMA camps. You're better talking about anything but this topic. And you know, about shape, shapeshifters. And, and that's why I lead in with the clues. It's like I, that's what makes this topic well, so hostile. Okay. Let's, I got one quick question before uh, the night's end. Um, you know, sphere, square, box, you know, whatever. Does it really matter when it's all really a cage anyway? Oh, yeah. I mean, when, you yeah. know, oh, you mean the shape? You mean, does it matter if it's a globe yeah. or a sphere? Yeah. Or a globe or a... Yeah. Does it really matter if At it's the end a of the day, day? Yeah, yeah, right. it will. And, and, here, and, and here's why. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you the, the religious version. There's several different versions you could take on it, but I'll give you the religious one. And that is, imagine all the major five religions, you know, um, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. All of these groups have been looking for some sort of proof of intelligent design. They've been looking for the Holy Grail. They've been looking for the Ark of the Covenant. They've been looking for every version of this. And to date, thousands of years later, no one has conjured this up. No religion has stood at the top of the hill and said, this is the mystical artifact that proves that we are not alone, that proves that we were created. If an enclosure, if an enclosed structure is revealed at some point, that all those religions get the same thing at the same time. And there is a massive paradigm shift from science to religion. And I know that sounds kind of dangerous, which is why I was really cautious about it in Clue 5 when I was talking about it, which is, you can imagine religion who has been getting punched around for hundreds of years, they'll come back and say, look, our texts haven't changed, and we knew it all along. So what are you guys going to do about it? And at that point, science, you know, they're going to be backpedaling for a while, and which is one of the reasons you wouldn't want to keep this secret for as long as you could, because science, technology, I've, governments, they, they want to hold on to their power. The, they might I've be able to adjust Sorry, go ahead. I've always said that the I've always said that the powers that be, like the ones that really pull the strings in this world, know something, have something, um, you know, know something really big that nobody else knows that, you know, they have something that I've always said that and I've always wondered what it was. Um and, and don't get me wrong, I'm still I I still not buying this, but hey, it, it, don't it is to. interesting. It really Again, is. It, no, I know. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it, I know. Look, look, anyone I anyone that, that accepts this accepts this right away is is strange in my opinion. I have seen people adjust to it in three days. I've seen people take weeks. I've still got guys that are making multiple debunking videos who will not let go of the sphere, which is fine. Hey, great. You know, again, if this I love the sphere icon. If it's comfortable for you, hold on to it. But I to tell you right now, there's something happening this year, and it's changing. And uh, you know, some people will take longer than others. And again, I feel bad for the the, the guy who um, who hung up. I, I'll, I'll give you one more example, real quick, because I, I know we got to go soon. But uh, I had a radio co-host uh, who, uh, woman, real open-minded, real psychic ability type person, you know, multiple frequency type stuff. She was about 30 minutes in, and she realized what she was looking at, and she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it anymore. And she real politely said, look, I can't, I can't do this. And she left the show and you know, left the host to, to his own devices. And she was prepped ahead of time, and uh, she still couldn't do it. So, Have you ever heard of that Albert Einstein quote? He says, uh, the sign of intelligence is that you're constantly wondering because uh, idiots, they're dead sure of everything. Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, the, there's, there's a certain, there's another quote, I don't think it was him, where uh, con condemnation without investigation is the true form of ignorance. Where it's, you know, because we get a lot, I get a lot of this. And again, here's, here's what I, I want to end, end this for you guys, if, if, if you can. And that is, people, you, the people will come at, you'll come at this thing, not necessarily me, but other people They say, anyone who believes in flat earth is an idiot. And I'll say, okay, how do you know it's a globe? I mean, do you know because you know? 
because you, you remember a globe in your first grade classroom that was sitting there since you were six years old until you left school? Or do you know because you saw a picture from NASA? Because that's the conditioning that's involved here. Yet most people know because they know. That's their first reaction. It's like, oh, we know it's a globe, duh. And it's like, really? How do you know? Because, because oh. you, you, you've seen the globe so many times in your life? How do you really know? It's not like gravity. It's not like fire is wet, water, you know, I'm sorry, fire burns, water is wet, and you know gravity. This is something different, but you don't know that. So, anyway, that's my thing. All right. Anything well, fair enough. Else? Yeah. I guess you're I guess you're right. I can't tell you one hundred percent that I've seen the earth and know it's flat. So <laughs> Yeah. Again, right. don't 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 take my I, what I try to end every video with is look, do your own research, ask your own questions. Just keep asking though until you know for sure. And then when you know, hey, come back to me. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Right. Right. That's right. Anybody got anything? Well, I, pro I probably will. I'll probably do a little bit more. I've I've been looking into it this last few months, and I don't know. I'll look into it a little more. <laughs> yeah, don't, I, seriously, I, I man. Don't 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 lose yeah. don't lose sleep over it. Don't lose friendships. I hate I hate getting emails from people oh, saying I'm that, not that, that family yeah. members won't talk to them because they brought it up. Oh, I've I've got enough stuff that family won't talk to me about. <laughs> Throw this in there. They'll probably be going to haul me off to the loony bin here soon. So, yeah. <laughs> not a life or death. The police no, state we're living in is now a is flat Earth. <laughs> so, the way I see it is, it's all you know. It's it's good to research anything and everything. It's good to ask questions about anything and everything. And at the end sure. of the day, you know, even though this. You know, as far as the political structure of the world, you know, we're fighting a revolution, but everything outside of that, it's fun. I mean, it really is. It, it, I shouldn't, I guess you shouldn't really say that because they're talking about a prison planet, not to use the, the term like from the website, but, you know, it is, yeah. uh, it, it is. It's fun to research this and, and to educate yourself or at least ask the questions. And, yeah. 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 That's where I'm at. So. Cool. Right on. Well, I don't know. Uh, right, you guys have anything else? Or we, is that it? Or I, I didn't know how long we, you wanted to go. So yeah, you know, I, I think we're, we're actually uh, not. Yeah, we're about ready to uh, wrap up here. We got like twenty minutes left. So yeah, man, if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, plug any uh, websites or or whatever. Right oh now, yeah. Before. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah. Anyone wants to look up more stuff on this, uh, you can either go to enclosedworld.com. Notice how I didn't say flat earth, uh, enclosedworld.com, or you can just Google flat earth clues and everything will come up. You got a Facebook we can add you to it. As well? I do not have a Facebook. I didn't want to stretch myself. Heck, I didn't even have a website two months ago. <laughs> Uh, that shows you how uh, how quickly this thing's kind of snowballed. Right. So, but yeah, so far it's gone. Uh, the YouTube stuff's gone real well. The website's doing great, and yeah, I uh, can't can't wait to see where it goes next. Perfect, man. Well, nice. Yeah. Well, man, nice I, I would. Yeah, yeah. I wish that uh, I didn't have uh, all these issues throughout the uh, show, and I uh, will listen to the show tomorrow. Because I heard probably about ten percent of it, so okay, to to it. it went great. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're gonna like it. I, cool. All right. So yeah, yeah we I'll check it out tomorrow. Kindness as well. Thanks. Definitely, ma'am. Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you guys very much for having me. It's uh, it's always a pleasure. And and I, again, I'm sorry I I don't get a chance to uh, to go toe to toe with. Uh, uh, with too many um, doubters, you know, right off the bat. But uh, it, you know, it's uh, it's it's always good for a new perspective. For well, sure, man. Well, Thanks, man. Uh, people like you are. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, anything else you need for me? That is it. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, cool. Look forward to talking uh, to you in the future, man. All right. Well, thanks very much, guys. I'll talk to you later. Later. Take Have a good night. Bye. Yep. You knew. Well, there.
So, Andrew, are you a well, flat earth there. theory you now? Buying it? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my website and everything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I on, honestly, honestly, uh, I I am uh, I'm not a flat earth theory believer, but it was interesting. I'm gonna keep at that. It's always interesting. All right. Well, anyway, we will be back to wrap up the show. 